Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. In today's marathon video, I am going to try and let you know exactly which reward vehicles I would recommend you to purchase, depending on what kind of a player you are. So as we're starting to get later on into this season of the Battle Pass, more and more and more players, whether they be free to play or pay to win, are going to be earning enough tokens to be able to purchase some tanks, or alternatively, to just spend them on purchasing bounty equipment. So in today's video, I'm going to try and play every single one of them and give you a bit of a breakdown about whether I think it's worth it and what kind of players it's going to work for. So firstly, let's talk about what was the original vehicle in this lineup. It was the AE Phase 1. The AE Phase 1 is statistically strong even compared to arguably the most competitive tier 9 heavy tanks such as the Concept 1B and the Conqueror. We see it packs pretty much the same kind of firepower. We see that it doesn't quite have the gun handling, which is just a touch worse than the com uh, the Concept 1B, but it's not terrible. It has the same kind of mobility as the Conqueror, maybe even a little bit faster with regards to its power to weight ratio, but it definitely falls back compared to the Concept 1B with regards to its mobility. Armor-wise, I'd say this tank's hull is all in all better than the Conqueror against lower tiered tanks, but pretty much the same against equal and higher tier vehicles. But really where this tank is super strong is the fact that it's an absolute god on a ridgeline. And when you're using your gun depression, your weak point is no longer exposed, and so your opponents are going to have an incredibly hard time trying to deal with it. This makes the AE Phase 1 an incredibly tricky tank to counter. Now, I haven't really played this one all that much, probably because it has quite similar gameplay to all of the other tier 9 heavies out there, and there's a lot of them. But if I was to have played this and I had the field mods, I would probably have two builds for this tank. One would be a gun ram events and turbo, and one would be a gun ram events and vertical stabilizers. I'm going to be using gun ram events and vertical stabilizers in this matchup here. Now, if I had the turbo on this tank, I would probably make my way towards the south. I feel like the south of Berlin is an incredibly competitive location for a hold down vehicle. However, because I don't have that extra speed, I think I'm just going to have to make my way into the upper part of the town and try and, you know, work the hold down positions there, work the windows and just try to grind my opponents. Now, one of the things that's really fantastic about all of these vehicles, I believe, that we're going to be talking about today is the fact that they come with a large repair kit that is free. So I'm not going to be having to waste 10,000 credits every time I want to be able to um, repair my track. And that's, of course, if I am pre-purchasing my large repair kits at half price and not spending the full 20,000. But not only is it free, it is also actually slightly better than a large repair kit because I believe it provides a 15% repair bonus. But, so that does give it a slight advantage compared to something like a Conqueror or a Concept 1B. It definitely makes it way more economic to play. And it actually kind of uh, puts the vehicle as the Concept 1B comes along my inside and takes the inner path. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a very good example of how much faster that tank is than my tank. Uh, it does kind of make these vehicles... that They're not quite premium. But it's definitely an advantage if you are the kind of player who will only use premium consumables. And this one's going to end up being significantly cheaper than a vehicle that doesn't have the luxury. So just a quick... Uh, disclaimer or just a quick talk as I'm playing this uh, through today is that this will be actually the first video on the YouTube channel. I planned to do one yesterday um, but I couldn't find the time to actually end up doing one. Uh, I, on the new outlining you'll notice that when I mouse over the vehicle we can see a lot of different colors in the outlining. Now that is because uh, of the new patch 1.16.1 which just came out on the European server yesterday and came out on the North American server a couple of days ago. And it does give you a tremendous advantage for seeing very accurately where the corners of buildings are, where the soft terrain that you're going to be able to shoot through is. It is going to be a tremendous advantage for everyone involved. So, try, hmm. uh, well, a tremendous advantage, but I still just shot into the uh, the building there. So Wargaming, you've got to make it even more extreme for me, right? You've got to make it even more extreme for me. It does end up being a little bit distracting, I, I have to admit. So as we can see there, the 7772 just really can't compete with an AE Phase 1 here. He could fire gold at the top of my tank, but I can just fire regular rounds and manage to uh, to catch the weak part of his armor there. So I know that the, the base is being capped here, but I really don't think it's my duty to kind of worry about that. I mean, it's everybody's duty in a way, but um, there's only so much you can do. And I feel like it's up to these kind of tanks to put the pressure up. And looks like somebody's managed to get in there. So an Amex M454 just managed to, uh, to clap. That's 7772. And we see that the concept has turned around there. 
Now, I honestly don't think that they have any more tanks that are holding the town. So I'm going to make a bit of a cheeky, aggressive play here. Hopefully, while they're not looking at me, I'm going to fire one in on, on the move. Very nice to have the vert stats there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up, hopefully, being able to start to side scrape against these TDs or at least force them to have to look in awkward ways. Like, is this player really going to be looking at me? Well, he actually is, but luckily my armor worked out well there for me. I could get that 263, but he doesn't seem to know I'm here. So why don't I just kill the griller instead? Okay, brilliant. I've got rid of him thinking about making a push play on the 705A, but probably I should just try and deal with this player here. Now that I fired at him, he's now going to know where I am. Honestly, if you're in that car- Oh, he shouldn't have turned the 7 the 405A just- Well, not the 405A, the FE405 Stage 2 just absolutely clapped the living daylights out of him. And I'm actually really happy in the end with that kind of a play. Um, I think that was bold. Sure, I guess I could have hit. I could have got hit, but that was a, a way to break that kind of stalemate here. Really liking the vertical stabilizers on this tank right now. I, I honestly think if I wasn't using vert stabs, I probably would have missed a couple of shots. And I guess there's just multiple ways of looking at this vehicle, right? There's multiple ways of looking at this vehicle. You could put a turbo on it and then try and make it like a semi-concept. Or maybe it should be a slower heavy, one that trundles into position. And so that is how I really feel about this vehicle, that it is, uh, it's, uh, for a great player, you're going to do better in the concept, hands down. Uh, but of course, you won't have that free large repair kit in the concept, and you've got to pay bonds for it rather than your battle pass points. It's not really that much of an affair analogy. But I do feel for an incredibly good player who already has the concept, I don't think the A phase one is really that worth it, because you're probably just going to get bored of being so slow, and you're going to want to go back to playing your concept, honestly. Uh, however, on the other hand, for players who don't have the bonds, who don't want to play through ranked to be able to uh, purchase uh, the concept inside the reward shop, uh, yeah, I do think that the A Phase 1 is just an absolute solid vehicle. There's one thing I should mention that I really don't like about this vehicle, however, and that is the 390 meters view range, which means that even if you have a really skilled crew like me and you're using a premium consumable, your view range is still pretty darn lackluster. I believe the Conqueror and the Concept actually end up getting 400 meters view range. And you might be sitting there like, oh, QB, you're being you're being so extreme or pedantic. Does it really matter if a vehicle has 10 extra meters view range? It really does. It really does. Uh, 390 means that you kind of have to consider taking coated optics unless you're a pay-to-win player like I am with a premium consumable. Uh, let's see if I can get this WTF Panzer IV maybe with an HE round. Unnecessary there, but... Oh well, we got him anyway. Uh, whereas if you have 400, even if you're a complete free-to-play player, after you've managed to get all of the uh, crew skills, you're going to be absolutely A-OK. -okay. I'll use my med kits, only 1,500 at the end of the game. This guy's trying to catch me, and we get him. All right, so all in all, solid game for the AE Phase 1. Three kills, 3,400 damage in a Tier 10 matchup. Honestly, this thing is its solid. The only thing that it will frustrate you is uh, the speed. Uh, when you're in those kind of situations where you really want to be able to go quickly to mop up the enemy team, this thing's really not going to work out for you. But if you're not one of those kind of players who feels anxious, you know, like they're rocking backwards and forwards in a game that's clearly going to be a win where you don't have an opportunity to be able to catch up with your opponents, then, then this one will definitely be for you. I think the AE Phase 1 is definitely one of the more new player-friendly tanks in this uh, in this lineup that I've got for you here today. And so the vehicle definitely gets a thumbs up from me as an all-round American performer. All right, so what's the next tank on our list then today? Well, it's going to be the 7772, a vehicle which you got to see me fire through the top of the turret there. The 7772 is such a generic Soviet vehicle with six degrees of gun depression and a 440 alpha damage gun. And its real strengths, I guess, its low profile, which does allow it to go hold down in a variety of situations. And the vehicle's armor um, is actually really good for side scraping, as we can see here, unless they manage to um, fire at the, the side of this kind of cylindrical fighting compartment here, or, or where you see basically the curve, where the, the turret starts to jut out from the, the front of the hull. The problem with the 7772 is that its statistics are really kind of up and down. Look, look at the 705A, packs literally 15% more DPM. 1,900 is really 
not good for a tier 9 heavy. It doesn't get a good shell velocity on its standard rounds, although it does get very good high explosive anti-tank rounds with 340mm of pen. Its aim time is not great, its accuracy is horrendous, its gun handling is bad, which means that you have to probably end up using vertical stabilizers on this tank. Its gun depression 6 degrees is nice for a Soviet heavy. The mobility of the vehicle is neither here nor there, with vehicles like the 257 being faster and the 705 not being too far behind. And the armor on this vehicle, I'd say, well, it's not bad, it's not great, and you combine that with poor view range and also not the best hit points. And the 7772 just ends up being a little bit disappointing, really. However, he says, it can still do well. I'm going to be using vents, a gun ram, and vertical stabilizers on this tank, as you saw me using in the AE Phase 1 as well. However, it is one of those vehicles which could benefit from using a turbo, but as I mentioned and showed you in the comparison, the, the gun handling is just so poor on this vehicle that you'll end up aiming for days in this tank, even with the best kind of crew, if you don't consider using a turbo in the vehicle. Alrighty then, so where am I going to take the 7772 on Empire's border? There's so many different positions I could go. I could go towards the center, I could go towards the north, I could go towards the south. I think it's probably going to be best if I make my way towards the center. If I had a turbo, again, I would go towards the north, but I don't have a turbo, so I'm not going to be able to make that position work. Just like I did with the T55A um, on the YouTube channel a few days ago or a week ago, right? Time just seems to be flying right now. Can you believe when halfway through April in 2022? Life is one of those things where as you get older, all of the different periods of time seem to have different significance. Because I guess like when you're a kid, you know, a year is a long time when you're 10. It's like a tenth of your life. Now it's like 3% 3, 3 of my life. It's scary. Oh my gosh. That is exactly what you want to have on a... Thursday when you're playing World of Tanks. Epiphanies. Questioning the meanings, the meanings of life. Yes. Um, Alright. Why don't we just focus on trashing tanks in the 7772, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go up and support this bat chat. There's a Cranvong there. I really wish that Cranvong had gone south, but I can't blame him because if I was in a Cranvong, I had I would have gone up here as well. The reason why I mention that is because this position down here is really hard to use unless you've got 8 or 10 degrees of gun depression. Wow, that Super Conqueror is making his way up the slope. That is very bold. If he continues to do so, he is going to get omega farmed. I'm going to tell this bat chat that I'm going to help him. Big tip, don't go close to the edge there because they can shoot you from that bush location. Swing round where the bat chat is, and if you swing round where the bat chat is, you are able to- Yo! Yo, yo, yo! Yo, yo, yo! Oh, no. Um, I reckon I actually have to fall back from this position. Or maybe I can hold it. You know what? We can hold it. We can hold it. This could be ugly, but it could be great. I feel like I have to hold here. I feel like my... We have to hold. Okay, nice. So this is where those six degrees of gun depression are actually handy. If I had five, I don't think I could make this work. So that 60 TP got absolutely clapped. Uh, I should probably use heat for this guy here. Gives me a higher chance of going through his lower plate. Wow, did you see how nice the ridge line was to try and figure out where it actually was? Well, should I say the new highlighting? Okay, well, that was uh, definitely a bit of a scary one. I want to shoot, but I don't want to die. Is the Jaeger to fire yet? I don't think he has. Maybe I can track him. Yeah, even with... The vertical stabilizers, the gun handling on this tank still feels pretty poor. Alright, this guy doesn't have uh, enhanced durability on his tracks. I've got him locked. He's locked down, he can't turn more. Perfect. Double tracking. Just what we wanted. Um, should I track him again? Yep. Alright. I don't really want to just rush around the corner into the Super Conqueror. I guess I've got more than enough time to aim for his weak point. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't. Again, DPM on this tank. Very lackluster indeed. I guess I should just load heat and shoot him. Should we just stop faffing around and actually kill the enemy tank? Does that sound good? Why am I trying to track him so much? Um, I should probably just try and kill the player. This guy's telling me to watch out retreat, but it sounds like the guy ended up firing there. Boom, baby. Alright, this game is razor close. Do I think they're going to take my base? I, 
kind of need heat for the top of this Super Conqueror right now. Did he fire? I think he fired. How weird do the hulls look like behind bushes now? All right, he's down. Okay, let's think about this. Okay, so I honestly think they're going to push through and take our base. So instead of swinging around there and going after the Emil, I think I have to go back to base. Um, guys, base is vulnerable. God, that's a tough word to spell. Vulnerable! Bat chat. Bat. We need base. The bat says we were up 6,000 hit points just a minute ago. Open wide smiley face. We have to get base, otherwise base is going to be lost. Okay, so I've got all of the hit points, so I guess I've got to try and make use of them. I honestly think they might have gone back to go after me. We don't have time to faff, so I'm going to have to be the assault tank. It's, it's as simple as that. I might lose a load of hit points here. Oh my word, they all went back! Yes, baby! That means that we're going to be able to go and defend our base. That's actually huge for us. I mean, it's not huge for me with regards to trying to actually get through these tanks in this YouTube video because this game's going to end up being a lot longer. <laughs> but it's actually huge because we've got a chance to be able to play the second stage of the game. So I could tell this bat. He already knows that I'll help him. Uh, I wish you could... Oh, hello, leopard. I bounced off him. Hello? No one here? Are you actually serious? My team is not going to be helping me out. Luckily... I can help myself. Maybe I can get this guy to panic off my upper hull? Put my gun in the way of him? Overmatch his side. Put my gun in the way again. Freak him out a little. <laughs> oh, good try, Leopard. Good try. Oh, awesome. <laughs> the bat chat arrived just too late. <laughs> well, that was a hard outplay on the Leopard there. And that is what's great about playing a tank with a low profile. Leopard was... I was just able to face hug him. And that is what a lot of people don't respect about the 7772. They look at the statistics and they think that the vehicle is incredibly weak compared to all of the others. But what they aren't respecting is this is a low rider tank. You know, like look at it, dude. Its hull is absolutely tiny, which means that you need to find situations where you can end up um, really surprising your opponents with the hull down scenarios that you can put yourself in. Um, Another thing that you can do is, as we could see there, face hug. Face hug. Low profile tanks are amazing for face hugging. Um, think that you're role playing in, uh, something from the Alien series of films, right? Become the face hugger. That's what you need to do in your 7772. We can see that it worked out really well for us there. Now the question is, is do I want to repair my, repair my gun? Yeah, I got to. I got to make this shot count. Hello. Hello. Oh no. No, he says. Oh, I wish I had a turbo right now. To be fair, unless he turns, he's still not going to be able to get away from me, I don't think. Do, 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 do. Boop, boop, boop. Four kills. Rock and roll. Five kills. Seven, 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 two. And this is what this tank does for me. This was... I use this tank on my free-to-play account where I just really don't want to do anything fancy. This vehicle will do better than an AE Phase 1 when it comes to making trades and when it comes to its speed and when it comes to just wanting to sit in a tiny little position with that real low hull. Uh, this vehicle on my free-to-play account I use during the mission marathons where I my brain power is severely diminished, maybe after I've been playing for a while, and I feel that it's a... Uh, it's a good opportunity to, you know, play a tank, which is a lot easier. Uh, so the AEF, uh, sorry, the 7772. Nice ace tanker there for this vehicle. I didn't fire any gold rounds as well. Thank God I didn't panic early on in the battle. And I should give a shout out to the FV405. Um, James, Death God, that's his anonymized name. He's actually Binary Guardian. Okay. Well, James, Death God, that's an interesting anonymized name for being able to help me out through the side there. Um, yeah, just a strong game for the 7772. I got a field mod on this tank. What am I going to take? Well, I got all-terrain suspension, unless I'm an idiot. So let's take all-terrain suspension on this tank. 
Um, but would I thoroughly recommend this vehicle? If you've got a really good Soviet heavy tank crew, then you'll be able to make this thing work for sure. It's definitely a tank that scales with crew skills. I'd say that just like the A Phase 1, it's fairly um, easy to play for newer players. But the A-Phase 1 is definitely going to be the superior tank on the ridgeline. Okay then, cool. So that's the 7772. Really didn't expect the games to be going so well today. So now I'm going to be playing in the K91PT. And I think it's very important that I now update my tank review on this vehicle. So when the K91PT came out, I thought it was fairly horrible. It was just this kind of no-purpose tank. Didn't have alpha damage, didn't really have armor, didn't really have mobility. It was just this all-rounder. It was almost like a medium that loses all of the fun of being a medium because it doesn't have a turret. However, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was before I had all of the field mods on this tank. And now that I've got reinforced suspension, which helps my mobility, now that I've got myself some accuracy upgrades, some view range upgrades, and matte paints, which improves my concealment by 5%, this vehicle is disgustingly good. I want to talk about this more in a dedicated video to the tank. Um, but all in all, this thing, I'm thinking, is probably going to be one of the, uh, the better tier 9 tanks in the game. I know, what a difference the field mods make. But this vehicle, honestly, it's got the perfect field mod across the board. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use the build that I was looking at here. Look, I was using an exhaust system. I was going to use 40% camo on this tank. So instead, I'm going to switch it out, and I'm going to be using a durability module instead. That actually will give this thing great track hit points. It will give it great track repair speed. And also, more importantly, it's going to still give it a whopping amount of DPM. All right, so we've got a bunch of A phase ones on the enemy team, a bunch of concepts on my team. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to try and use the speed of the K91 to get up on top of the hill and go after my opponents. So this vehicle, I know, right, uh, my tank review was fairly disparaging towards the uh, the vehicle. And I, I did stand by it at that point. I just couldn't really enjoy it. I couldn't really make the tank work. Now, with field mods, honestly, and equipment 2.0, this thing has been revolutionized with what you are able to do with it. Now that I can have two sets of equipment, so I can have one for where I want to be sneaky and one for I want to just sit in front of my opponents and just farm them up. And also just having 40% camo when moving, I really didn't expect this thing was going to scale as well with all of the, um, the mods. And that's why I've been putting time into it recently. I've barely had an opportunity to do some thorough playtesting now that I've managed to get all of the field mods because that 5% camo at the sacrifice of a little bit of reverse speed is wild. So you can see just how fast these concepts are. We're up on the hill. We're going to have to push. I'm a little bit concerned that these concepts are doing what they're doing with all due respect because it means that our lower town is going to be incredibly vulnerable. We've got three of our four tier 9 tanks up on the hill right now doing nothing. So I'm actually thinking this game could be a disaster of a loss unless we manage to catch the three AE phase ones. That's interesting. Now we've been completely caught out. And this concept, he's just hes just dead. He was overconfident. He didn't think the A phase ones were coming. And they definitely were. So yeah, that sucks. And unfortunately, it looks like he's going to get farmed up. So, oh well, my bad. I thought that I had some, I thought that I had some good concepts and uh, they've ended up just in a horrible crossfire, but they maybe can still manage to get their way out of this. Okay, let's try and chill and see if we can still manage to get through this one. So obviously the enemies want to try and push up. What can I do in this game? Looks like he's getting hit by a scorpion. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This isn't working out well for us, boys and girls. Um, I've got to try and get into a position where I can help that guy. Try not to get hit by an SU-152 from down below. Doesn't look like he can see me. Now he can see me. Maybe he can't see me. Maybe he can see me. He couldn't see me. Can you believe he was 300 meters away and he couldn't see me there? All right, I guess they're going to push. It looks like the concept's going to run away. So I guess I need to be getting out of here. I'm going to put a greedy shell in there to secure, secure the kill. And I'm going to run away. But I think I just got caught. Uh, why did that guy just so casually just run away. I mean, I've got to repair that, I guess. Uh, yeah, this was a misplay. Oh, well played to the A phase ones. They're doing a really good job. They're spamming heat all in through the side, all three of them. Great stuff. 
Concepts just completely screwed me. He says, well played to K91. Dude, you two were concepts. You two were concepts. Like, 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 well, well, well played what? You, you were, you were, you were con, you were concepts that didn't do anything. Concepts that, that didn't do anything. Like, what are you going to do? Oh, well, I screwed up this game. I end up with a, a terrible result. And you're an ape. Yeah, mate, you rushed you rushed forward and went hold down against three vehicles and then couldn't your teammate ran away from holding the hill. Okay. Okay, mate. Uh good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Have fun. Happy face. There we go. GG. Alright, so this game really didn't work out well for me for the K91PT. Stay tuned to the channel, however, because I promise you, we're gonna have some when I have more of an opportunity and I don't have such a crappy situation for the vehicle. I will show you what this thing is capable of and give you a better idea. However, in the interest of this video not being like about two hours long, I think we're going to have to move on. Honestly, however, just the short story, the K91, it's its the weirdo out of the bunch. I'm not sure a lot of people are going to pick it um, and wait for a video, which I will have. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, maybe in the next few weeks or, or the month of like when I finally got an opportunity to to run the K90, uh, K91PT how I want to. Okay, so now we've played the heavy tanks, we've played the tank destroyer, now we're going to be moving on to the medium tanks. We're going to be playing in a Char Future 4. Okay, so this vehicle is kind of a lot like a bat chat stripped down at tier 9. And I'm going to go out there and say that for the better players out there, I think that this has to be one of, if not the best tanks you could pick out of this whole list. The Char Future 4 is just this absolute wonderful support damage dealer that can play multiple roles. It can be a tank that can play like support sniper at a decent distance with an accurate gun and great pen. And it can also end up being a vehicle that ends up doing really well in close quarters combat assassinations. Now it does take a long time for this vehicle to unload. That's one of the biggest weaknesses of the tank is that it has a four second intraclip reload. So you really got to watch out for that. But the gun depression that this tank have, which I believe is like seven and a half degrees, ends up making the tank way more flexible on a ridge line than the tier 10 bat chat could possibly dream of being. The tier 10 bat chat has six degrees of gun depression. It's always something that I feel holds back the tank. Okay, so Char Future 4. Let's see if we can do more like we did in the 7772 and less like we did in the uh, K91 PT. That was just a horrible situation, you know. I really thought that they were going to have all of their tanks down below in the town, and they weren't. And because the concept, because the A phase ones were so slow, the concept got jumpy and decided to push forwards. To be fair, like him calling me an ape, probably, probably thinks I played like a bit of an ape. It was just one of those kind of unfortunate situations where I think that he ended up in an awkward scenario and he wanted to kind of lash out. Um, I, I guess a bit like I did in the end as well. Um, I ended up in an awkward scenario and I couldn't really make the most of it as well. But we'll play to the enemy team. They won fair and square. Alright, we're going to push forwards here against this Kampfpanzer 50T. And we end up not getting spotted here. I was going to make an aggressive play and I just screwed up. Once again, I am getting too cheeky at the start of my battles. I was going to try and make a play up to the high ground and um, yeah, that didn't work out. Again, vehicles appearing where I didn't expect them to be. Well, okay, that's an awkward start for me. That's fine. The Scorpion G says no spot. Um, yeah, it's always tricky, mate, with no spots. Uh, I guess, should I dump a blind mag out here? Probably should. Always awkward when you're um, firing blind. Now they're not hitting. Well, I guess I might as well commit the rest of my mag anyway, right? It's not like I'm going to uh, to hold it. All right. Maybe we got something there. Maybe we didn't get something there. I got 30 seconds to be able to recover. So this vehicle, I'd say, is way, way, way better than the, the Batchat 25T AP, the Tier 9. While the Tier 9 has kind of like this bigger magazine where you can do a larger amount of damage, it kind of just all in all sucks. Uh, because it just takes so long a bit like this one to do it, but you don't have the armor that this thing has A lot of people get very surprised by the Char Future 4's armor, especially against tier 7 and 8 tanks when you do get into those nice matchups The Char Future 4 actually ends up with quite a lot of armor um, That your opponents can quite often just not expect not expect at all All right, so let's make our way into this bush see if we can try and spot through 
Um, kind of a little bit alarmed at the fact that our whole team is down south and um, we still don't know where a couple of their TDs are. Well, we know where their FE405 is now. So it looks like their bat chat fell back. Now, I'm fairly sure there's nobody in that bush. If there is, well then, just screw me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a bit of a push play around here. I've got to be careful that the bat chat doesn't manage to come and catch me. And this is where, like, the 7 degrees of gun depression in this tank can really work out because you can end up having enough gun depression in positions that other tanks just simply couldn't. Or shall I say, positions that other autoloaders with their lack of gun depression can't use. That is a good amount of damage to deal. It's not 10 out of 10, but it's not bad. Got to watch out, this Kumpf Panzer can easily get me in the turret right about now. Now that i got a Scorpion here as well, maybe the Scorpion can end up distracting him a little bit. This Kumpf Panzer's armor is great. It's not that great though by the looks of it. Oh, get shut down, matey boy old chum. This is kind of a greedy play here to look for that extra shot. I shouldn't have done that. He was only ever going to side scrape in that scenario. Okay, so the enemy's bat chat is so low on hit points they can't really do anything. And what we just saw there is what the Char Future 4 is great for. Just dumping out mags. And it's dumping out mags with such great penetration. Like the bat chat 25 TAP, as we saw in my video from a couple of days ago, because it uses the same 100mm gun as the stock bat chat, has something stupid like 230mm of pen. Whereas this gun at 268, it's the full Bat-Chat gun at tier, at tier 9. And that's what's just incredible about this tank. Is that it's, to all intents and purposes, a tier 10 tank just dropped down to tier 9. And while I guess it doesn't have the mobility that you would expect with the... Uh, doesn't quite have that mobility or doesn't quite have that view range to transcend it into being an overpowered tank. It's about as good as it can get at tier 9 without it being overpowered in my opinion. So the only things that I really don't like about this vehicle are its intraclip reload, definitely balances out a little bit. The fact that its gun handling is really poor, which means that you more or less have to end up using vertical stabilizers on the vehicle, or maybe I guess you could use an aiming device as well if that's more your kind of thing. Um, but the main thing that I don't like about this tank is the fact that it ends up having, uh, I think it's 380 meters base view range, which means that you have to take coated optics on this thing. You can't even use a uh, commander's vision system because its base view range is just so darn poor. As we go back into the garage, I'll just I'll show you the exact spotting parameters that this vehicle has and hopefully be able to try to explain that. But definitely one of the things that I really dislike is when a vehicle has less than 390, 400 meters view range and I have to make sacrifices with regards to the equipment that I have to take because boo hoo hoo, I have to take coated optics. It's not what you want. And there you go, there's a 380 meters view range base that this tank has. And you can see even with an incredible crew like I have, I only get 484 meters view range. And 42 meters of that is because of coated optics. If I wasn't using coated optics on this tank, even with a premium consumable, and even with having a seven skill bat chat crew, which is one of my most played on the account, I would only have 442 meters view range. That is not enough view range. And so I just, yeah, I can't stand the, the Char Future 4 because from that perspective of having to use coated optics, if I could have used an accuracy device on this tank or if I could have ended up using a turbo or something else or a commander's vision system even on this vehicle, I think this vehicle would end up being like one of the best tier nines just outright in the game. But even with having to effectively sacrifice that equipment slot, this is still an absolute stunning tank and I would thoroughly recommend it for any of you great players out there who have a good French medium crew. If you like the Boraski, you're probably going to end up liking this tank as well. If you like the Batchat, at tier 10, you really owe it to yourself to get this vehicle, as it's going to be great. Alrighty then, so let's play another medium tank. This time it's the Kunzerpanzer. So, the Kunzerpanzer. Uh, this one is a headache to play. It really is. It's an absolute headache to play the Kunzerpanzer because the vehicle has two modes. It has a siege mode where it gets to use its hydropneumatic suspension, and it has a mode where it doesn't. Now, outside of its siege mode, it has great DPM, 2,500, Horrible accuracy, but good gun handling, and it can get 10 degrees of gun depression. Not bad. Inside the siege mode, its speed halves itself 
Its gun handling gets terrible, its DPM gets bad, but its accuracy gets great and it can have 15 degrees of hydropneumatic suspension. Accordingly, this kind of like jackal and hide functionality of the Kunzerpanzer makes it really hard to decide about what kind of equipment to take on it. Inside the siege mode, I'd love to use a turbo and vertical stabilizers. Outside of the siege mode, I'd love to pump up that DPM and try and improve the accuracy, and this tank doesn't need vert stabs and certainly doesn't need a turbo as it's actually pretty quick. It also makes it really hard to compare this tank to all of the other German vehicles. Undoubtedly the E50 and the Kampfpanzer have way better armor. All of these vehicles have the fairly similar mobility and while the Kampfpanzer definitely has an advantage with regards to its damage per minute, its gun handling is not nearly as good as a Leopard prototype and it doesn't have that 420 alpha. Accordingly, it makes it really hard to decide what kind of equipment to take on this tank, because when I'm inside the siege mode, I really have to have vertical stabilizers, otherwise my um, reticle really blooms out. But when I'm outside of the siege mode, I really don't need vert stabs, and I wish that I was improving the horrible base accuracy that this vehicle gets. So I'm going to just go for my generic approach. I'm going to go with vents, a gun rammer, and vert stabs. Again, I don't have all the field mods on these tanks, if I did, I would probably end up using a commander's vision system build as well for when you get up onto those those bushy maps. Alrighty then, so Erlenberg it is. This isn't really a map which I ever think to myself, oh yay, I got myself on Erlenberg. And it definitely isn't a map where I really feel that there's too many opportunities to be able to get 15 degrees of gun depression. Um, I think I'm going to start off in the generic position, which will be over here at the castle, and then just try and see how the battle evolves. There's no artillery, so I don't have to worry about that, but one thing you do have to worry about if you end up using this position on the castle is tank destroyers over in this location, because they love to sit on these mounds and be able to dump rounds across the map, which I really don't want to happen. Alright, so all in all, Kunzerpanzer, you're going to see that it's fast from the get-go. It doesn't have, like, god-tier uh, power-to-weight ratio, but it's definitely no slouch with regards to its mobility. But once it's in position, dang, is this vehicle flexible. So you can see that as we're moving around outside of the uh, the siege mode, or outside of the hydropneumatic suspension mode, whatever you want to call it, that our gun handling is not too bad. Our accuracy, however, is pretty poor, so we're going to have to watch out for that. So let's get into position over here, and I've got more than enough gun depression to be able to rock and roll this position. So this is where I need to enter the siege mode. My tank gets slower, but my tank also gets more accurate. So look at that accuracy now. Now we've kind of got the best of both worlds when it comes down to the, the Kunzerpanzer. We have the ability to snipe and siege, and we have the ability, and also to be able to use our gun depression, and then we have the ability to be able to... Um, attack and have high DPM as well at close quarters combat. Okay, so this is going to be a real tricky map to decide exactly where I need to go, but oh, with the TS5 and friends clearly crossing here, then I should be able to go after that. Oh dear, yeah, my uh, gun depression not as good outside and oh, that accuracy. Oi, 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 oi. Does this thing have less gun depression over the side than over the front? No, it's definitely just a hydropneumatic suspension problem there. I really would have never thought that 10 degrees was an issue. Okay, so do you see how when I enter the siege mode, that when I make micro movements, even with vertical stabilizers, that now my um, reticle really does bloom out. And that is just an example of how bad the, uh, the dispersion is inside the siege mode. Honestly though, taking a look at how, how good the aim time is on the tank, I'm inclined that I'm considering just to all in all drop vertical stabilizers on this tank and try and take something else. Maybe I could end up taking a turbo to make the vehicle func function a little bit better inside the siege mode, or alternatively, maybe I could take Commander's vision systems. My, oh god, my mobility isn't poor. Well, if he tracks me again, I'm just out. I'm just out. That's all there is to say. I'm just out if he tracks me again. Uh, okay. So there's a G, so I really did not expect a tortoise there. Uh, that was definitely a very unexpected thing. I'm trying to figure out where this lynx is going to go. There we go. That's where the lynx is going to go. Looks like the tortoise got just as bored as I did. Um, is he going to push up? No. Let's see if we can find this tortoise. He's trying to aim at me. Obviously, they can still see me in those bushes there. I feel like this guy's got to make a decision about where he's going to fall back to. 
He is getting absolutely pounded. Now the leopard's going to pound him. Now I'm going to track him there. Can you shoot him, leopard? Probably he can't quite manage to get the shot. Okay, so my vehicle's only got 30 millimeters of side armor, which means that I can't side scrape against this tank, otherwise he's going to be able to get me. Um, I really wish I could go into those bushes and remain unseen, but the G-Saw is just waiting for me. And because I've not got my large repair kit ready, I don't really want to get caught by this tortoise. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't actually get spotted there. That's interesting. Do I get spotted here? I don't. Maybe the G-Saw fell back. Hmm, that's interesting. Or am I spotted the whole time? Okay, the G-Saw clearly saw me. The G-Saw's clearly up, up around there. Why are they not shooting the CDC, though? That's interesting. Oh, he is. The G-Saw's shooting the CDC now. How can he shoot him without getting spotted? Maybe the G-Saw fell back to a different location. Should we see if we can get this tortoise? We can. Oh, there's the little cheeky lynx. It's actually the lynx and not the G-Saw that's there. Maybe the G-Saw fell back further. Well, we're managing to clunk through this tortoise, but I'm losing a lot of hit points for it. Um, it was just one of those unfortunate situations where I ended up pushing in this tank, and uh, yeah, I was unable to be able to get the extra shots in. Or I was unable to be able to... Oh, he's just such an annoying lynx. Really is such an annoying lynx. Inside the siege mode, huh? What an advantage, so I can shoot the lynx more accurately. Gosh darn it, if that lynx wasn't there, I could mess around with this tortoise, but I just can't do that. So the lynx is clearly just sitting up in the bushes right now. Um, i got to just try and keep blind firing the guy. You ain't messing around with me anymore, Mr. Lynx. You ain't messing around with me anymore. So unfortunately, I think that's just one of those actions that won't really have a big consequence in the battle. But at least it looked cool, right? At least it looked cool. Does he see me there? He does. Can you believe that bush location? The tortoise, man. Like, one of the world's most annoying tanks that you could ever have for this situation. Dude, literally just... I can't dig out a tortoise. I guess I gotta try. I guess I gotta try. Oh, he can just clap me so hard. Oh! <sighs> Oh, looks like I am caught between a rock and a hard place. And what are you going to do against a tortoise, man? Um, Erlenberg, boys and girls. Maybe I can still get a shot into this G-Sort before I die. Well played to the enemy team. They rocked and rolled. The G-Sort caught me early and the tortoise caught me behind the building. That was really unfortunate. Anyway... 2,000 damage, not the result that I wanted. I didn't really get an opportunity to show you gun depression, but that's Erlenberg. This is uh, a bit of a tragedy of a map. Honestly, I don't think that many of the other tanks would have done that better. Actually, that's a lie. If I was playing the E50, I could have side-scraped there. If I was playing the the Kampfpanzer, I could have side-scraped there. I think that um, the Kunzerpanzer was definitely one of the, the weaker uh, German medium tanks for this scenario. If I was playing the Leopard, I would have had slightly more alpha damage than the, the Tortoise. It's a tough one, though. So do I recommend this vehicle? Honestly, no. I feel like it's a, a bit of a headache. If you're an incredible player and you will be able to dance around inside the modes and use that siege mode and then jump out the siege mode to be able to get the extra DPM and then jump back in the siege mode, then maybe it's going to work out for you. For me, whenever I play this vehicle, I end up just not having as much fun as I think I would do if I was playing something like an E50 and I could be more aggressive. And I end up not having as much fun as if I was playing a Leopard and I really had one of those god-tier sniping guns. Nevertheless, the Kunzerpanzer, it's not a bad tank. If you're a good player and you can learn to use the Siege Mode, you're going to end up doing well with this vehicle. Would I recommend it for new players? No, I really wouldn't. And I also personally think that the vast majority of players are going to do significantly better playing something like a Kampfpanzer, an E50, or a Leopard prototype. So that game was just really unfortunate where I got locked down, and this Tortoise, 53% win rate player, a good player, all he managed in the Tortoise was two shots. I guess he was quite fortunate that the other flank was a win for them, and that he had El Gisor backing him up. All right, so now I'm going to play the final 
reward vehicle that's available, but I don't have it on my main account. And I'm not going to purchase it on my main account because I feel so strongly that this is a poor tank. So I'm actually going to end up playing the Lorraine 50T on my account on the North American server where I ended up purchasing all of the battle pass stages to be able to get an early tank review of this vehicle for you. So what is there to say about the Lorraine 50T? It's got terrible DPM that makes you feel as if you're not a heavy tank, especially compared to its uh, competitor, the Amex M451. It does have decent pen, however. The vehicle's aim time is horrible. Its accuracy is pretty good. Its gun handling is pretty good when moving, but terrible when turning the turret. Its depression is nice. The vehicle's speed is great, 60 kilometers an hour, but its ground resistance has actually prevented from being able to get up to that point very reliably. The vehicle's hull armor is non-existent, and its turret armor is thoroughly mediocre. It doesn't have the hit points that it needs, and it doesn't have enough view range to avoid using coated optics if you want to also be a fairly proficient scout. And when it comes to this thing's turret armor, um, the gun is lopsided, and we're going to find out whether Wargaming has fixed that bug yet. Its armor is neither here nor there. It definitely will work, but it just won't work super reliably. But your hull is just so horrible. It's like a 5120 hull, and it really doesn't work out well for you. I'm going to be taking two builds for my Lorraine 50T, one with vents, a turbo, and a gun rammer, so I can try and maximize one of the only aspects of this tank that's good, which is the mobility. And I'm also going to be taking a coated optics setup as well, because as I mentioned, 380 meters view range is just not enough to be able to spot your opponents proficiently, unless you have an incredibly good crew. Considering that this is on my NA account, yeah, I don't have the uh, the luxury of even having a very good crew. Alrighty then, so nightmare scenario for this vehicle really, where I'm having to deal with tier 10 tanks. But at least there's no artillery to worry about, and there are some tier 8. Himmelsdorf, not really the vehicle that I would say is incredible for Himmelsdorf. I'm definitely not going to be taking coated optics on this map. I'm going to be going for that gun rammer instead, but if I do take the hill... It could end up being a little bit awkward if I don't have enough view range to be able to spot off the hill. Alrighty then, so Lorraine 50T. Definitely, I'd say, the worst vehicle out of all of the ones that I've played so far. So let's make our way up on towards the hill and, and give it a good go. So that is the plan. Alright, the turbo should help me to be able to get up there. And you're going to see that even with the turbo, this thing still feels a little sluggish, right? It really does. That is not the uh, kind of speed that I that I would want, boys and girls. That's for sure. 46, 48, 49. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. But considering that's meant to be one of the highlights of this vehicle is the tank's mobility, it just doesn't seem to be as fast as it kind of needs to be. Now, I'm not saying that we want to have a vehicle that can drive around at 60 kilometers an hour and has a really good turret. That would end up being a disgusting meta vehicle and probably very bad for the game. But when you have this god-awful reload on the tank, and just god-awful hull armor as well, it just feels as if it's a heavy tank that sacrifices so much that you might as well just play a medium. That's the way that I feel about it. You might as well just play a medium, boys and girls. I honestly can't believe that I'm playing a tank that's meant to be quite quick, and I'm getting up on the hill just so slowly right now. But luckily, we have a Progetto to shoot. So we can bounce off his turret. So my uh, my turret here is actually really good against a vehicle like this. There's no way the Progetto will poke against me again unless he's a real silly sausage. There's no way he pokes against me again. He's just going to sit there and try and bait me. But you know what? That's not how you bait someone. Okay. Is he in a platoon with the other Progetto? No, he's not. He's in a platoon with the ELC Even 90. Um, I'm going to go after this Progetto 65. I think he's firing out all of his rounds. If I get clubbed from down below, I'm going to feel pretty stupid right about now, though. That guy looks like he'll be tracked. So this is where it'd just be nice if I had some DPM. It'd also be nice if I had some hull armor in case the ELC pushes me. Oh, no. 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 How did you get there? Oh, this tank is so slow, and it's so bad with regards to its DPM. Oh, sweet lord, please red me from the petulant existence that is having to play this tank. I don't think I can even escape anymore because that T-30 has me locked down. Well, I really didn't expect both of those T-30s to come up onto the hill. Alright, let's think about what we can do. Alright, so clearly we're going to win the lower ground if they've invested so much on the upper ground. So I guess I've got that going for me, which is nice. 
So let's just try and work this position and try and try and get as much damage in as we can. I can't afford to get hit by the, the T-30s anymore, that's for sure. We've also got some snipers, so that means they can't push along the west of the map, and if they do, they're going to get absolutely pounded, and it looks like they are. That looks like exactly what's happening right now. Looks like I have to hold this position, however. I can't really let them just come around the corner too much. Where is my line of fire? Where's my line of fire? I think I've got to try and... I think I've got to try and push. I think I've got to try and go for this. I think I've got to try and go for this. There we go. That's a good shot. Come on, somebody's got to get the projector from down below. Seriously, boys. Anyone? Any shooters? Come on. You can get us from down below. Come on. No? All right. Um, I guess I just chill here. I'm going to try and turn the Progetto a little bit so I've got an even better cover while I run away. Uh, I think that's probably going to be my best bet. It right, looks like my team have actually managed to start to go up behind my opponents. I would love to push, but I just don't have any armor and I don't have any mobility to be able to run away. And I don't have any DPM to be able to cut through the situation when I'm there. Um, yeah, are you starting to see a, a pattern for this vehicle? YouTube. Are you starting to see a pattern for this vehicle? Yep. Oh, 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 oh. oh, it's so slow backwards even with a turbo. Oh, it's such a bad tank. Don't buy this. Don't buy this tank. Listen to me, YouTube. Don't buy it. It's horrible. It's probably one of the worst tanks I think I've ever played tier for tier in the game for like a, a fun value. Sure, it's fast. Shh. If it's going down slope. Sure, it's got a good gun and 10 degrees of gun depression. But you just don't have any of the other aspects that you need to be able to make plays. And your turret armor even. It's good, but it's fallible when you get it yourself into those kind of harder matchups. I really can't see that this tank is even going to scale if I manage to get all of the field mods on it. Because it just feels that darn awful. It's too bad DPM, it's got too bad mobility, its view range is not high enough, it is a terrible stinker of a tank. And I actually have a few field mods, what else is going to help me? Pretty much nothing, none of the other field mods are going to make a difference. Do not buy the Lorraine 50T, you would actually do better to spend your hard earned tokens on bounty equipment, honestly. So I'm going to end this video by giving recommendations for players who maybe have all of these vehicles already. Have you got all of these tanks? Uh, if the answer is yes, don't buy the Lorraine 50T anyway. Do you know what I would recommend that you do? Wait for my Cobra review. I will review the Cobra and I will give you an idea of how the vehicle plays out. And because it costs 24 tokens, if you want to play that one early, then maybe you should hang on to the tokens that you've earned so far so you can be able to see if that vehicle's any good. And then what's the worst that happens? If I do a Cobra review and I say that the vehicle's absolutely awful, then you've still got your tokens to be able to spend elsewhere. And if both of these vehicles end up being terrible, I would thoroughly recommend that you consider buying bounty equipment instead because that will make vehicles that maybe aren't terrible actually useful. Do you know what? I'd even probably recommend it's better to uh, have the bonds than it is to have a vehicle that's as stinky as the Lorraine 50T. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was an epic video where I played all six of the purchasable reward vehicles, hopefully giving you an idea of which ones are good, which ones are friendly for what players, and which ones I would thoroughly recommend to avoid. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and it was useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, however, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments which of these reward vehicles you would recommend for players to purchase and which ones you would recommend to avoid. And let me know also if you're planning on saving points for, for the Cobra instead. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.